In this video, Columbia University's doctoral candidate, Rashidul Berry, will teach Newton's first, second, and third laws. He starts with the story of Sir Isaac Newton, which is connected to history of physics. To tell you the history of Sir Isaac Newton, I have to take you to England. The year is 1642, and the day is Christmas Day. So Sir Isaac Newton was born on Christmas Day, 1642. 24 years later, 1666, he was sitting on the, under an apple tree and he was studying mathematics. All of a sudden, he saw an apple fall. He looked at the sky and he saw a moon and he asked a key question, if apple fall, does the moon also fall? That turned out to be the most important question any human being ever asked since our separation from so, apes. Sir Isaac Newton wanted to solve that falling apple and falling moon problem, but 1666 math was not in advanced enough to allow him to solve that falling apple falling moon problem so what did he do he invented calculus a new branch of math he uses the calculus to lay the foundation of physics and he also uses the calculus to write most famous law now known as newton's laws of motion law number one object at rest like to stay at rest an object in motion likes to stay in motion unless acted upon some imbalanced force. If you take a look at this apple and look at this apple, what do you see? When you look at this apple, you should see Newton's first law. Why do you see Newton's first law? Well, if you show this apple to Aristotle, Aristotle will tell you one thing. This apple at rest. Why do you think this Aristotle was wrong? Sir Isaac Newton would disagree. He would say this object could be at rest or could be in motion. Don't forget that Newton's first law has three parts. First part is inertia. Second part connected to momentum. And third part makes a transition to Newton's second law. Let's take a look at Newton's first law. Object at rest likes to stay at rest. Object in motion likes to stay in motion unless acted upon by an imbalanced force. First part is inertia. Second part connected to momentum. And third part makes a transition to Newton's second law. Let's take a look at Newton's first law. What is the acceleration of this apple? Zero. How many forces acting on this apple? You probably think there is no velocity. The apple is at rest. Acceleration is zero. So there might be no forces acting on this apple. This is the mistake Aristotle made. Now Rashidul Barry will show you two forces acting on this apple. This is going to call normal force. What is normal force? The force coming from the table. Why the force coming from the table? Because table want to be at rest. Table want to be at rest. So table realize that someone placing an apple on the table. So table applying the force. The table applying the force, which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the to the to the to the gravitational force that acting downward. Now. This force has to be equal in magnitude. Is this equal in magnitude? No. This is not equal in magnitude. So I have to, so I have to, um, I have to cut because this has to be equal in magnitude. This is the the normal force and this is the gravitational force. I have to do that. I have to cut uh, to make sure that the force is equal. I did it. I did it. So this one, this is the gravitational force acting on this apple, and this is, uh, and this is the normal force. And this is the normal force acting on this apple. So there are how many forces? There are two forces acting on this apple. One is normal force and one is gravitational force. Normal force coming from this table. And the gravitational force is always downward. Normal force is equal in magnitude opposite in direction. Now Rashidul Berry shows you why net force is zero. Why the net force is zero can be written as can be written like that so this is the sum, uh, sum of all forces this is sigma that means sum of all forces all right so now f fx and fy sigma fx and sigma fy so how many forces acting at the x direction if you see how many forces acting at the x direction, there is no forces acting at the x direction. So I'm going to go back over there and I'm going to write zero. How many forces acting at the y direction? Now I'm going to look at the y direction and I see these forces acting at the y direction. So I'm going to write this one. I also see 
Oh, this one. I'm going to write this one. This one is Fn. And Fn is always positive. And I see this one. And I see this one. And this one is acceleration. This one is the gravitational force. So now I'm going to write the gravitational force. Now, at the y direction, the object is not moving. The apple is not moving at the y direction. It's equal to Fn minus Fg. So then Fg is equal to Fn. Now Rashid Yulberry will explain Newton's second law. Newton's second law is the most famous law in the universe. Now, take a look at this one. When you see this one, you should see Newton's second law. Why do you see Newton's second law? Is because there is an imbalance force. Although there are four forces acting on it, you should see there is an imbalance force. So where the imbalance force come from? The applied force. You see this vector is bigger. So there is an imbalance force at the x direction, making the net force is bigger than zero, making it accelerate to this direction. I'm gonna now Rashidul Berry will make a connection between demonstration and Newton's third law. It's equal to reaction, so he cannot move the slack. But this driver forgot. Have you ever taken any physics? No, why should I? Uh, you should take physics. This driver doesn't know that the action and reaction acts on not only one object but on so several objects. It, it acts on the driver, it acts on the rope, and finally it acts on the sled. So let's take one at a time. So the driver applies some forces on the ground and the ground apply same forces equal in magnitude opposite in direction that's one pair of action and reaction let's take a look at uh, what happened on the rope the rope apply some forces on the driver and the driver apply some forces on the rope and let's take a look what happened on the slide the slide apply some forces on the ground and ground apply same forces on the slide now how can the driver move this slide? Only in one way driver can move this slide if he apply loss of force on the ground. If he does apply loss of force on the ground, then ground will apply loss of force on him. So that will affect how much force driver apply on the rope. That will affect how much force the ground will apply on the slide. So if because the friction can only be so much, friction can only be so much, but driver can apply as much force as you want because loss of friction I see on this ground and driver does not take the advantage of this. So driver, why you don't push hard and then take the advantage? Finally, the sled is moving because you know Newton's third law. Yeah, I'm physics smart now so I can move the sled. I'm going to fire you if you don't take a physics course and show me the transcript that you got in A. Yes, I will take a physics course. Now write an essay to explain what you discovered from this video.